Hey! This is a conjecture and calamity lost episode. You gonna sit back, enjoy it, grab a cup of cocoa. This one's coming straight from the archives, y'all. Tupac coming back to life, biznitch. Yeah, mother... God, this is terrible already, isn't it? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what's that first, uh... What's that first scenario that you've got for me? Okay, Alex. In keeping with the Christmas theme, and going with, you know, sort of our movie, um, fanaticism, picture this. You are Harvey Weinstein, okay? You mm-hmm. know, the, the big movie producer... One, like one of the great moguls of yesteryear, but in the, the, the king modern of the day, Jews. the king of the Jews, you know, not that king, you know, we're not going to crucify him, people, but um, that king of Hollywood, of independent Hollywood, um, or the more commercialized form it's taken now, the king of the Oscars, let's call him that, because pretty much, you know, if the Harvey Weinstein's name is stamped on a film, it's Oscar gold. Now picture this, you're Harvey Weinstein, and you've just acquired the rights from the Schultz family, from, you know, probably one of your favorite franchises in the world, it's it's a passion project brewing inside of you. You've gotten the rights to Peanuts, and you mm-hmm. want to create a live-action version of the Peanuts Christmas special, okay? okay? So, you're Harvey Weinstein, you want this shit to win gold, alright? So... I'm tasking you with casting the director, the writer, and the cast of this prestige Peanuts Christmas film. (laughs) Oh, God. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a little bit of time to think, and we can edit out the thinky bits. Yeah. Because this Um, this is a big one, you know? Yeah. You got to think of, like, you know, this is a prestige picture, Alex. This Mm -hmm. is going to sweep the Oscars. Best picture, best director, best... Adapted screenplay. I had to make that distinction. <laughs> best actor, best actress, best supporting actor, best supporting actress. Is it gonna sweep all the BTL categories like you know editing and sound editing and sound mixing? I don't know what the difference between those two is. No, I do. <laughs> but um, best cinematography. It looks so real. That's because it is you moron. You know, <laughs> it's live action peanuts. It's live-action well, peanuts! I feel like if we're going to make Oscar gold, mm-hmm. it has to be a light-hearted Christmas movie, because mm-hmm. we can't have a dark and gritty um, David Fincher. We can't have a dark and gritty Peanuts movie. No, we can't, Alex. <laughs> we can't. Not even Benjamin Button. Charlie, it has to be. Charlie Brown can't, you know, he can't find Lucy's head in a box, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And Linus is in the middle of the field. He's got, you know, the orange jumpsuit on. I forgot the black one's name. What's his name? Uh, Token. That's his name. <laughs> the the only on. black character. That's Franklin, you know? The black. The black. <laughs> and it's just going to get a picture of, you know, a peanut with, you know, the little shell casing on. Not the shell, but, you know, the little, um, the little, uh, fucking leaf part on it. Oh, holy shit, his name is Franklin. It's Franklin, yeah. Oh, you knew that. Yeah, I, I knew thought that. you were just pulling out a name. No, Token, no, because Token on South Park's a clear parody because Franklin's just the token black character, the Peanuts. They're just like, hey, Franklin, he's like, sup. And, you know, he just walks away. <laughs> Franklin, I don't think Franklin has any fucking lines in, in any Peanut special I've seen. <laughs> he's just there, there for was representation. Actually... So you can't cast Denzel because, you know, that's just. You can't give Denzel a non-speaking role, you know? Okay, so I feel like if we got to make a white-hearted... A white-hearted? But still Oscar... A white-hearted? Like, oh. Because, you know, there's only one black character <laughs> <Hey>. in Peanuts. <laughs> a slip of the tongue. <laughs> uh, it was a Freudian uh, if slip, we want, Alex. Who'd you vote for? <laughs> if we want a light-hearted Christmas film that still can be Oscar gold, mm-hmm. I feel like you got to get Ron Howard to direct okay. it. I feel like with movies like Cinderella mm-hmm. Man, it, there's a certain charm and sweetness to his very depressing stories, right. like that of Mr. Peanut, mm-hmm. uh, Charlie Brown. Mr. Peanut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Charlie Braddy's got the top hat and the monocle. He's just twirling his cane. That wasn't uh, funny. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we're going to get a writer, we should probably get someone who's really hot right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Hot writer? Who's a hot writer? Like, who wrote... Who wrote the imitation game? Oh, I don't fuck it. No, some gay dude. His name is Graham Moore. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say he's so hot right now. I mean, he's not necessarily a hot commodity. He was... Yeah, what's he working on right now? Or is oh. he? He might not be. Yeah, I'm trying... I'm looking at, like, the Oscars of the past few years for, like, not um writing-wise, but, like, best picture noms. And a lot of these are sort of one-off people you got you got to look at best adapted screenplay because that's when um that's where you really see um <clears throat> you know the best picture winners because i don't know when the last time an original oh wait no spotlight that one that was original that one best picture never mind fuck me i'm dumb yeah. um <clears throat> but yeah there's a lot of um hot people on this list that i have pulled up right here for the adapted screen screenplay noms some big names that I know of. You know, I think that a a, a bit of a left fielder, mm -hmm. but combined with um, Ron mm -hmm. Howard, there can be some serious uh, serious push. Mm -hmm. I think Richard Linklater could write a really good Peanuts movie. He could get the... You know that's really that's a really good choice actually. Richard Linklater as yeah. as the writer, yeah, he because um yeah he'd be the true emotion, true emotions, the very like realistic. That. I'm surprised you didn't say Wes Anderson because you know a lot of his humor is like very peanutsy type of humor. You know the more adult like I, kids I, and all that. I saw um the Grand Budapest Hotel on this list and I thought of it. But I feel like he wouldn't want to write something that he wouldn't That's direct. That's true, yeah. And if he weren't, if he were directing the Peanuts movie, it would not mm -hmm. do well. I think there's well, something. I don't know. I mean, he his his past few movies have done really well. Yeah, I just not like not to not a knock against him or anything, but I feel like the Peanuts are a bit more grounded, mm -hmm. less uh, floaty and uh, poppy as a Wes Anderson movie. Granted, like, Darjeeling is really a character yeah. study, and, well, all of his movies are character studies, but I feel like um, the penis just isn't as blatant mm -hmm. about it. And plus, the idea of, like, cinematography, like, going across the, uh, the brick mm -hmm. wall, and that would just be too cheesy right. for my... I don't think that people would really bite that. We should get Aaron Sorkin to write the Peanuts movie. That would be great. <laughs> You know, they're just walking down the hallway, and, <laughs> and you know, it's just like, talk to me. She tore the football again. Again? Again. <laughs> Where's my dog? Where's my dog? There he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got Ron Howard mm -hmm. directing, Linklater writing mm -hmm. it. Um, You said cinematography? Um, I have to pick a, a PD? I don't, I don't think... Or... I have to pick I don't a think DP. You, you don't have to. I mean, you can just move right to the casting. But if you have a DP in mind, you know, if you want to have Roger Deakins lens the uh, <laughs> lens the, the Peanuts <laughs> Christmas special, I mean, that's that's totally fine. I mean, I, I guess he could get some cool neon Christmas colors in there. Yeah, I think I'm gonna skip. Yeah. That one. Well, for mm. acting, and this is the key: you have to the... cast the Peanuts right, Alex. You know, you can't fuck right. up with the Peanuts cast. This is the one that came to mind immediately. It was the first thing I thought of, and it's the perfect person for the role. And granted, you might think I'm being a little biased, because you know I love this guy. But hear me out. Charlie Brown, played by Giovanni Ravisi. It's, I mean, he's, he's got the really, like, sad look. You know, he actually, he probably would be, he probably would be pretty good. Because he's got a, he's got a very mm -hmm. sad sack sort of air about him. Yeah, he he'd be a good choice, you know. Mhm. Mm I just picture him like with his hands in mm -hmm. his pockets, like looking down, like that classic Rabisi yeah. sad. And face. he's got the like the yellow shirt with the black squiggly zigzag <laughs> on it, <laughs> the yeah. classic. And he's got like you know a little comb over going on, like he's you know, 
He's six, but he he's six and he's balding already. So, <laughs> 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 poor fuck, man. Jesus, poor Charlie Brown. He was depressed. Mm -hmm. He had cancer. None of his friends liked him, and he can't pick out a tree. What for an old shit. stick in the mud. You know what I'm saying, Alex? What a real <laughs> chunk of coal. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like laying in a bed going through chemo. <laughs> Just like, what a stick in the mud. <laughs> oh my god. You're worthless, Charlie oh Brown. God. You know, actually, I don't want to like, um, I've been listening to the Super Mega podcast recently. Um, they have a podcast and I've been listening to it on Gage's recommendation and they brought up something that was uh, really unsettling. Also, it's on Peanuts, and it does have to do with cancer. So okay. <laughs> apparently there was a special called Why Charlie Brown Why that was about a classmate of theirs <laughs> getting <laughs> cancer. <laughs> and all the kids were making fun of her hair, you know, getting torn out and and wearing the cap. And, and you know, Linus was the only one, I mean, of course, he was the only one with the heart big enough to see the sadness of the situation. And after they, you know, walk out of the hospital visiting her, he just looks to Charlie Brown and goes, Why, Charlie Brown? Why? Why, Charlie Brown? Why couldn't it have been you? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, the, the, sh <laughs> the program doesn't do enough to shit on Charlie Brown, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it doesn't do enough. That guy's a fucking... That guy is cancer, you know? He doesn't have cancer. He is it, you know what I mean? Come on, look at he him. He probably gave it to that girl. He probably did. It was probably an STD, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that'd be scary. That, yeah, that'd be very scary if cancer was a sexually transmitted disease. I would never just... fuck again. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have sex without a rubber, you know. <laughs> I just wouldn't have sex because nobody would want to do it with me. <laughs> but, um, anyway, back to uh, back to casting the peanuts. <laughs> right, I feel like I just got it dynamite with Giovanni Ribisi. Yeah. Who else should I cast? Who else do I got? That's up to you. You're Harvey Weinstein, dude. You know, <laughs> you're you're um, you're winner of you know best picture so many times over. I mean, you won for The English Patient. You won for Shakespeare in Love. Shakespeare, Shakespeare in Love. Love. You've, you've brought, for better or worse, you've brought Kevin Smith to the mainstream. You you launched <laughs> Quentin Tarantino's career. Who, 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 who are you going to cast in your prestige Peanuts picture, you know? Say that five times fast. Prestige penis pictures no no it's not a, it's not a pristine penis pictures pristine that's prostate got... polaroid you penis see, prestige penis pictures you know you said at the beginning that you were gonna open up a production company hopefully hopefully that should be that should be your uh, your company's name oh yeah prestige penis pictures yeah because you know you're only gonna have a career in porn sorry <laughs> No, you just hit me, hit me hard. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm. <laughs> Made me realize the state that I'm in. <laughs> it's not that bad. There's people, you know, you could be worse. You could be acting in porn films. Not that there's anything wrong. Not with that, that there's anything wrong with that, but most likely you're addicted to drugs. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being very judgmental this podcast. Um, I think I'm maybe I'm just a very judgmental person. <laughs> Uh, it's the Catholic in me. You know, Julia Louise Dreyfus would be a good uh, Lucy, right? Or is that's the psychiatrist's name, right? Yeah, Lucy. Yeah, that is Lucy. That could work. I mean, like, okay. what's your what's your rationale behind that? Well, um, she's really hot right now with Veep. Mm -hmm. Didn't she just win a Golden Globe? She's, she's she's won her like fifth Emmy in a row, I think. Yeah, and she's got the. Uh, she got the snark. She can, mm -hmm. like, from Seinfeld, she can do somebody dirty. Yeah. She's a cunt, is what you're saying. Quick wit. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to... Yeah, Julia Louise Dreyfus, we don't want you on this podcast at all. Even though we think you're a lovely and talented woman, we just want to stay as far away from you as possible. Yeah, but if you could set us up with Kramer, that would be great. Yeah, Get I would, I would love podcast. for him to come on and just say the N-word so many times. That would be our... That would be our most controversial episode, but that would really, you know, that would get the clicks, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know? 
We just use like a clip, uh, clickbait. A clickbait title. Upload it's just picture. like Kramer said what, and it's the picture is just ours with like you know doing the Home Alone face, and Kramer's <laughs> in the middle. He's got his hands out like what I do, you know. It's like trying to break into our house like with an iron print in his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just comes in with a deli slicer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got Giovanni Ribisi as um, we got as Giovanni Charlie, Rib- Brown. Uh, Charlie Brown. We got yeah. Julia Louise Dreyfus as um, as Lucy. Who else? Mm-hmm. Who else, Alex? Uh, this one, people might not be happy about this one, mm-hmm. but very much like um, Andrew Garfield in the Social Network. It's like you'll 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 get it. It doesn't make sense, but then you'll get it. Mm-hmm. Um. What about Andy Samberg for Linus? I feel like at a certain point, you gotta have, like, the ray of light. Somebody who can actually be the sweet to Charlie Brown sour. And that's really what Linus is. Uh Uh-huh. And so I think that you gotta get somebody a bit off the cuff. Mm -hmm. Somebody a bit goofy. Now, do you think he has the intelligence to play the role of Linus? Because Linus is probably the most intelligent character in Peanuts. You know, these are all, like, you know, very intelligent children that say these occasionally profound things, and that's, you know, where a lot of the humor comes in, and Linus is probably the most profound character. I mean, this is the Peanuts Christmas special, Alex. Do you you think Andy Samberg can pull off Linus's monologue about Christ at the end of the picture? Well, to be honest with you, Vinny, I feel that because we're casting grown adults as uh, eight-year-olds, I could take a bit of a liberty with it. That's true. Yeah, um, that's very true. <laughs> you know, and, I and it'll be eight-year-old-sized that... clothes. You know, too. So they'll be walking around in pretty much what looks like half shirts and short shorts the entire time. Oh my god! Gonna, this is she's gonna. This Julie is the way. Dreyfus is gonna have a tiny dress on. You're just gonna see your vagina so much. It's gonna. It's gonna be great, people. I was gonna say this is. This is actually how i live out my lifelong dream of seeing giovanni rabisi's peener mm-hmm. sticking out of a pair of boy yeah, shorts just, just his bell end sticking out of like you know the <laughs> the boy short cuff i could i could understand i mean with that idea in mind this this actually is going to win best picture alex this is like this is the <laughs> film for the ages this is probably going to be the most the greatest film to grace the oscar screens since I don't fucking know, Slumdog Millionaire. What? We're gonna try to take it as seriously as possible. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like a shot-for-shot remake, mm-hmm. but everybody has their dicks hanging out. This is a masterpiece. I mean, I don't know. How, <laughs> I don't know how you can cut it any other way. What other main character? Well, we'd get um, Elton John to play Schroeder, obviously. That's a that's and that an takes amazing care of the pick. soundtrack that's too. That's an amazing pick. You know, we just have you know. Uh, Elton John like songs covering the entire entire picture. Can you imagine him doing his version of Christmas Time is here? Christmas Time is here. <laughs> and he's got the you know, he's doing it more like Crocodile Rock instead of you know the sad Arrested <laughs> Development version. <laughs> yeah, that, that would that would that would that does take care of the soundtrack. Uh huh. And you know that you know you get a lot of good pop songs in there. Maybe you throw in you know um. You maybe have a duet, you know, between him and Lucy. You know, they do Don't Go Breaking My Heart. Elton John singing with Julia Louise Dreyfus. I mean, come on. Oh, here's another Oh, here's another thing. Um, thinking about casting Schroeder, you might want to second guess this. Could you see Julia Louise Dreyfus fawning over Elton John? Who doesn't fawn over Elton John? And I think that's, that's true. the true <laughs> that's the true subtext in it. Mm-hmm. Because obviously Schroeder is gay. He has like been gay his entire life he is but lucy just doesn't get it she never picked it up and it's weird because everybody else knows i i don't think i've quite ever gotten that reading from Pe- that? peanuts alex i mean i always just thought schroeder was just you know a beethoven type of figure who's so you know into his work that you know he just has no time for you know women but i mean you just you think he's gay Speaking of gays, Ellen Page as Peppermint Patty. That's that's a perfect pick. That is a great pick. That is, oh, that is that is a perfect cherry. You know, you know what we, we you know what we should do. What what we should actually do? Is scrap everything that I've said. Okay. Just put a snow filter over the movie Juno. 
and then say that it's the Peanuts Christmas special. Have it be about Charlie Brown knocking up Peppermint Patty mm-hmm. like everybody knew that they would. Mm-hmm. And then we've got fucking Rain Wilson. He can be Linus. Okay. He can be Linus. He can be Linus. And he is everybody's best friend, I guess. Right. And then we could get Aaron Eckhart. That's that's who plays the dad, right? I haven't no, seen No, that's Juno Jason Bateman. In like a long ass time. That's Jason Are you for Bateman. real? Yeah, th- wait. Fuck. Wait, who for which dad? Her dad or, the, or... No, the one who like adopts. Yeah, that's her that's baby. Jason Bateman. Oh shit. Yeah. All right. Well, this is just another curveball in it. Jason Bateman uh-huh. will be Pigpen. <laughs> why do you why do you say that? Why is he Pigpen? Uh, because Pigpen's goofy. Okay, and yeah. We all know that Jason Bateman got his start as Little House on the Prairie. He's probably fucking stinking it up constantly. That's true. So that those naturally go hand in hand. I mean, but Jason Bateman's also, you know, the straight man character and everything. You really think he's got the you really think his straight man chops fit Pigpen's persona? That's the great thing about Pigpen, though, mm-hmm. is because he himself is a very uh, intelligent boy. Mm-hmm. He's smart, and he's very uh, literate. You can tell from the way he speaks. Right. It's just everyone else is like, damn, Pigpen, you fucking stink constantly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> They miss out on all these little nuggets of That's that's the famous that's the wisdom. famous that's the famous <laughs> quote the famous from line. any like Peanuts film. It's just like Pigpen walk walks in, in and, and he's just like, like Jesus Christ, Pigpen, you stink <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Charles Schultz when he in. when that line popped into his head, he was like This is my legacy. This is what I will be remembered for. They'll be talking about the Christmas pageant or some shit. And then and Pig Pen Pig walks will walk in. in. He just stepped in and dog he'll shit, be like, and he's he's covered in feces, actually. So <laughs> and he'll just be like, "Listen, the American political system of two parties is not working. It doesn't allow for the greater American people to be able to reach out to their government, and we, in turn, uh-huh. feel a distrust in the people who are supposed to be supporting us." Mm-hmm. And then all at once, everybody turns and says, Jesus Christ, Pigpen, <laughs> you smell constantly. <laughs> That's... And then Snoopy, played by Lassie, jumps on the fucking Elton... <laughs> Snoopy's... Jumps on Elton John's piano and just starts doing that dance where he waves his arms around. Yeah, but he's just, you know, an actual dog, so he's just kind of, like, hopping on his hind <laughs> legs. Also, no CGI. That is 100% we trained we, we a dog. Train a dog. Like yeah, we train a dog, yeah. We train a dog. We put a little, you know, we put, a, like, a nice piece of filet mignon above, like, you know, the camera where the boom is supposed to be. And we have him, like, hop on the hind legs and all that. Ugh. And then he's got to go, you know, save Rain Wilson when Rain Wilson falls down a well. And that movie, that bastard combination of mm-hmm. Juno, Aaron Sorkin, and uh, Lassie, all that put together, that's how you make an Oscar winning... That's That would sweep. That would even win in animation, even <laughs> if it's live action. <laughs> And is this your way out of getting out of having to cast Franklin? I mean, <laughs> I mean, where's Franklin in the Christmas special, you know? Donald Faison. Oh, Why okay. is that a question? Yeah, that yeah, goes without that, a question. Okay, yeah, that goes without it. Well, who 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 does J.K. Simmons play in this Juno Peanuts crossover? Oh, fuck. And who does Jennifer Garner play? Is she <laughs> is just Jennifer Garner? What is does she play? Uh, what's no, her name? No, fucking J.K. Simmons would be the teacher. Oh, yeah. I'm just imagining him up at the front. Wah 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 wah. But he's not he's not J.K. Simmons from Juno. He's J.K. Simmons, Simmons from, from Whiplash, Whiplash, and he like comes in yeah. and he screams in their face <laughs> like wah 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 wah. Uh, that would that would net him his second supporting a- actor uh, Oscar, I would believe. You know, if we'd also to, get to, to get... see Michael Sarah piss his pants. That would be incredible. Yeah, Michael Sarah piss his pants as Charlie Brown. Um. Well, so who does Jennifer Garner play? Is she Marcy? Uh, is Marcy and yeah, Pig? Is Marcy point. and Pigpen? You know, actually together in this universe. 
<laughs> Marcy's just like, well, sir, you smell constantly, but you have a nice <laughs> dick. I don't know. I thought she, wait, I thought she had a crush on Peppermint Patty. Well, yeah. Did I mean, Jennifer that's, Garner? That's the strongest relationship is in Juno is the one between Juno and that, uh, no, no I, I haven't seen Juno in a while. <laughs> but I know that, you know, they were just, um, oh, here's the twist. Uh, Charlie Brown knocks up uh, Peppermint Patty so her and Marcy can have a child. Oh, my God. There we go. <laughs> How did we not see that before? I, I I just saw it, and you know I think I'm I think I'm gonna win a Nobel Prize for that for that. You saved the world. I, Vinny. I saved the world. I saved the world from Trump and Nigel Farage. It is like, <laughs> this is I I saved 2017 people. As Harvey Weinstein, as me, mm-hmm. I grant you the power of King of the Jews. From how hail. You saved my movie. Hail me. I'm the king of the Jews. Let's go have a knish and hang <laughs> me on the cross. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah, please. Ooh. <laughs> so is that the, uh, is is that, are you calling that? Is that the end of, uh... I'm gonna call that one. Okay, you're gonna call um, that Um, we one. have to have Colin Firth in it at some point, because anything that he does... Oh, yeah, any... ...for some reason goes for Oscars, oh, so... Oh, well, he's, I mean, instantly... Colin Firth can play Woodstock. So, Colin Firth and Lassie is our cute animal duo of of uh, the Prestige Peanuts picture. Exactly. Oh. The Prestige Penis picture that is <laughs> Charlie Brown's second Christmas. Oh, God, this hypothetical situ- this hypothetical podcast is turning out better than I thought. <laughs> oh my God, this is great. Colin Firth... Better than we expected. So, Ron Howard is going to, you know, put a snow filter over the moony- movie Juno and expect <laughs> us to believe that Charlie Brown, played by Michael Cera, is going to knock up Peppermint Patty, played by Lucy, so that her and Marcy, played by Jennifer Garner, can have a child... While Marcy's in the guise of a relationship with Pigpen, played by Jason Bateman, who smells constantly, <laughs> and J.K. Simmons <laughs> is the teacher from Whiplash, but he does the teacher from Charlie Brown moves, and um, and you know, let's just still have it. Elton John is gonna play, you know, Schroeder, <laughs> who's in love with mm-hmm. Julia Louis Dreyfus, but he's actually secretly gay, and ne- no one knows it. And um, and then well, Rain Wilson gets it, to give a speech about Jesus. And Rain Wilson stands up at the end on his you know Seven Eleven cash register and preaches about Jesus at the very end of the film, while they huddle around the twig that is their tree, <laughs> hold hands and sing the song from the end of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Peace on earth, Jesus is good, buy more peanuts stuff. Uh, perfect. Perfect. All right, that's, we're going to tie, uh, tie a bow on that Christmas present to you people. Yeah, that was a conjecture and calamity lost episode. What you want to do if you want to hear more from us in the future, just follow us on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. All those links will be below. Why don't you make sure you follow Alex and Vinny on Twitter? Yeah!